Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Kill Team Battle Report. I am Phil, the Glacial Geek, coming to you here from Savannah Line Games in Pooler, Georgia, where I'll be fighting a kill team battle, a, an arena kill team battle uh, between my Gene Steeler cult and Neil's Tyranids. So this is the first time we're going to be doing the kill team, uh, the, the arena kill team. So we're going to be playing the secure the delivery sites uh, mission. Uh, essentially, there are uh, six objectives that are on the board. The entire board setup plus the objective placement uh, is specified exactly for this mission. So there's no uh, alternating deployments or anything like or alternating placing. Everything is set up exactly the way it says, uh, it says in the book. Uh, the mission uh, itself comes with a card, and on the back it has a a map with all of the deployment that you have to do so we've got it all deployed that way uh, and essentially what happens is at the end of each battle round uh, you score there's up to you can score up to three points at the end of each battle round if you control an objective you score a point if you score two objectives you score a point and if you score if you control more objectives than your opponent you score a point so if you control one one objective and your opponent controls two you score one point if you control one objective, your opponent controls none, you get two points. One for controlling an objective and one for controlling more than your opponent. If you control two objectives and your opponent controls three, you get two points. One for controlling one objective and one for controlling two objectives. But if you control two objectives and your opponent controls one, you get three points because you'll have control one objective, control two objectives, and control more objectives than your opponent. Uh, so that's the primary uh, point gaining in this mission. But then there are secondary missions, which I'll we will show you in a second because you actually choose them secretly and have them. Basically, they're, they're secondary options that you have. Each mission will tell you which ones you can choose from, and you choose them. So the, the game comes with two sets of cards that you play with uh, that are the exact same objectives, and you choose in secret which ones you want to do. Uh, and there's always one that's for the actual mission itself that you can all that you could uh, replace the other ones with, um, which is kind of interesting. You choose them in secret, and the first time that you score them, because you score each of these at the end of a battle round, uh, the first time that you score them, you flip it over and reveal that you have it to score the point. So from there on on out, it's no longer secret, but uh, until then, it is secret. Uh, so you'll have you, each of us have three of those that we will score, and you can score a maximum of three points uh, from those secondaries throughout the game. Each game is only going to be four rounds each, so it's going to faster. It's designed for uh, it's designed to be competitive play, so it's designed for tournament kind of play. Uh, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, that is the mission, the story. I did that a little bit backwards. Usually do it the other way around. But the story that we've got going on here today is that the day of ascension has arrived, and the Tyranids have arrived on the planet and fought side by side with their gene stealer cult brethren uh them fighting for their deliverance and fighting for enlightenment uh until they realized that the tyranids uh were not just all there to save them in fact they were there to eat them as well uh the tyranids having successfully overthrown the imperial forces on this planet have now turned on their uh their little brothers and have started to consume them so the gene stealer cult is now rising up against the tyranids to try to save their lives in one last ditch fight uh, this this uh, factory here uh, is a, a large source of their supplies that they've been using to uh, try to stay alive and fight back and, and do something to try to move off planet and try to save their their uh, their their hides before they could before they get turned into the uh, biomass for the Tyranid invasion. Uh, but the Tyranids have found this location and sent out a force to try to go disrupt the um, disrupt the deliveries of these of these supplies and the gene stealers have have risen up to try to uh, prevent them from disrupting them. So that's the story, and that is the mission. Before we go any further, though, let's show you the two kill teams that are going to be fighting it out. So for the Gene Stealer cult, my kill team will consist of, from left to right here, a leader who is an acolyte leader with a hand flamer. We have an acolyte fighter with, with a uh, heavy rock saw who will be my combat specialist. We have my comms specialist. And then we have another acolyte fighter with a heavy rock saw who will be a zealot specialist. We then have one neophyte gunner with a heavy mining or with a mining laser, and then we have seven more acolytes. So for the Tyranids from left to right here, we have his leader who is a warrior with two bone swords and a death spitter. We then have a warrior with scything talons and venom cannon. We have a 
Lichter, with, uh, who is his scout specialist. We have a gene stealer, who is his combat specialist. And three termagants, one with a devourer and two with flesh bores. All right, so those are the kill teams going over deployment. I have my leader back over here. I've got a bunch of regular acolytes over here. We've got my combat specialist, my zealot specialist. We've got the neophyte gunner with the uh, mining laser. We've got my comm specialist, and we have two more regular uh, acolytes over here. Uh, going over deployment for the Tyranids, he's got his leader over here. We've got the devourer uh, termagant here, and we have the uh, heavy specialist over here. We then have his uh, gene sealer combat specialist right by the door, along with the uh, the flesh boar um, dude bro over here, another flesh boar dude bro, and his lictor over here. So that's the deployment. Um, so now we will roll off to see who will have initiative going into turn one here. So we will roll our two dice to get initiative. Uh, I get an 11. Well, we both rolled 11. Okay, interesting. Roll it again. I rolled a seven. My opponent rolled an eight. So my opponent has the initiative. We'll come back to you after movement phase for the Tyranids here on turn one. All right, so I just want to show off uh, some interesting moves. So I did my uh, cult ambush with these guys and moved them up towards him up over that way uh, with those three guys. But uh, over here, I was wanting to move these guys out of the uh, out of the location here. But cult ambush says that on a D6, you roll on a five plus, they can move up to six inches. But to open a door in this game, you have to spend your movement action, basically spend your action opening the door. So my guys now can't open the door to cult ambush through it. So they're kind of stuck where they are right over here, which is kind of an interesting little uh, little tweak there. It, uh, it kind of directs where you're gonna go. So I decided to move the guys I want to be a bit more aggressive with and we'll see how this all pans out. So that's going to be the cult ambush phase. So we'll come back to you after movement phase for the Tyranids. All right, movement phase for the, the Tyranids here on turn one. Uh, his pure strain over here uh, advanced around over here to uh, jump on that objective after his uh, dude bro over here opened the door for him. This dude opened the door for the Lictor to advance up over this way. Uh, and his other three guys have already themselves looking down the hallway at my guys. So that is going to be it for the movement phase for the Tyranids. We'll come back to you after movement phase for the Gene Stealer Cult. All right, so this movement phase for the Gene Stealer Cult, he advanced, he advanced, he advanced, he advanced. Uh, he opened the door for all of these guys. My comm specialist opened the door for all of these guys. He, my gunner, readied himself and these guys both advanced over this way. Uh, so that is it for the movement phase. Uh, or actually, I'm sorry, these guys are now going to be charging. So we're gonna start with um, my combat specialist who's going to charge uh, into these two guys over here. So we've got Overwatch from them. So we'll come back to you with that. All right, so he's charging into, like I said, the Tyranid, uh, the, the Termagant with the Devourer and then the uh, Heavy Specialist with the um, the Venom Cannon. So we're going to do the three shots from the death spit, uh, from the, uh, the Devourers over here. So hitting on sixes. Ooh, getting two hits. Strength Force, the threes to wound. Getting two wounds. AP. One second. All right, AP nothing, and a, so five up saves. Getting one, failing one, so one uh, one damage, right? So that's gonna be the one wound down, so what is the injury roll? A whole bunch of stuff. On a four, he's out of action. So now my Zealot's gonna charge into his leader here and the same Devourer guy, so we'll do the Devourers first on sixes. Getting one hit, looking for a three, strength four, toughness three, that's a wound, five up save. He's good, woo! All right, and the, uh, the Death Spitter here is now going to fire into him. Three shots. Getting no hits there in Overwatch. Uh, so here comes his charge distance. Uh, he is in. And now my other guy is going to charge into his Heavy Specialist and the Devourer guy. He's engaged, but he can fire. So here comes his uh, shots here. All right, so it's going to be one shot hitting on a six. No, no hits. So his charge distance. Five inches, I think should be in, we'll check. All right, so on to the shooting phase. I have my one ready guy over here. His ready guys all got engaged in combat, so they can't uh, fight, I can't shoot. So my shooting is gonna come here with my um, my heavy, uh, my, my mining laser guy here with my neophyte gunner. He's going to fire into his termagant in the back over there. So he's within range, but not half range, so he's minus one to hit because of that. He's obscured with all those bodies in the middle there. 
minus one to hit because of that. But he's got plus one to hit because of the comm specialist here. So that's going to make it a five up to hit. No, no hit. All right, so into the fight phase, we're gonna start with uh, my zealot specialist. So he uh, charged, so he gets plus one attack for the charge. He also gets plus one um, to his strength. So he is going to be attacking with his heavy rock saw into his leader over here. So I'm gonna have three attacks. These are gonna be hitting on threes. Um, they're gonna be hitting on threes, and then it's AP minus four, strength times two, two damage a piece. So these are gonna be uh, wounding on twos because he's gonna be end up being strength ten attacks. Uh, wounding on twos and uh, AP minus four, two damage. It's pretty pretty gruesome. So hitting on threes though, getting two hits. Wounding on twos. I'm gonna spend a command point to reroll that one into a wound. So that is two wounds at AP minus four. So that goes straight through his armor, doing four damage. Uh, is he? That is all of his wounds. He's got. Yep. So that's all his wounds. So we have a. Two injury rolls because it's damage to weapon. And with that double sixes, he really wants him out of there. And now my other regular guy here in charge is going to attack into his uh, into his uh, heavy specialist there, the warrior there. So I'm going to have two attacks. These are going to uh, be hitting on threes. Getting one hit. Wounding on a four. These are the ones with the rending claws. Uh, no, no wound there. Then I've got one extra attack with the cultist knife. That is not a hit. All right, so now his Termagant's gonna attack into my Zealous Specialist, so he's gonna have one attack, hitting on A4. Nope, no hit. All right, so now his Warrior here is gonna attack into my regular dude bro. He's gonna have four attacks because he's got the Scything Towns there. These are gonna be hitting on uh, hitting on threes. Rerolling ones, but no ones there, so that's two hits. These are strength four, so looking for threes to wound. Ooh, no wounds. Gonna spend a command point to reroll one of those. That is a wound, AP, AP nothing, so looking for a five up. No, failed that one, so one wound here, so let's see if he's out of action. Out of five he is. All right, so that's the end of the turn here. No one has to take morale or uh, any leadership tests to take in the morale phase, uh, so we're all good on that front. Um, but we were now going to look over the scoring for this round, so I score one, two points for controlling two objectives. My opponent controls two objectives. Uh, so we each get two points for the primary mission since we both got one for control one, we both got one for control two, but neither of us controls more than the other. So that means nobody gets that third point. So we each have two points for that. Uh, then on to the secondaries. I didn't score any of my secondaries yet, but my opponent has now shown his first secondary, which is thin their ranks. At the end of the battle round, score one victory point. If two or more enemy models were taken out of action that battle round. So he killed my two guys over here, which gives him one point for that. So leaving my opponent with a lead of three to two. So we'll come back to you. Um, or now actually we'll roll off. I keep think, forgetting how that. We'll roll off now for initiative going into turn two. Uh, my opponent is going to have the initiative, so we will come back to you after movement phase for the Tyranids. All right, movement phase here on turn two for the Tyranids. Uh, this little dude bro uh, moved up here and then opened the door. You can open doors after at the beginning of your move or at the end of your move, and that's all you can do is just move. You can't move after you've opened a door. So he moved down here to open this door. Uh, this guy fell back out of combat with my Zealot Specialist. Uh, his dude bro, his heavy dude bro, uh, readied himself. He just moved back there, uh, staying on the objective. Or no, he just stayed where he was. That's where he was. He stayed where he was. He uh, did a similar thing to his other uh, friend over there, moved up here and opened the door. And then his Lictor over here uh, felt moved back a bit uh, just to get stay within range here, but stay further away from me, from these guys. So that is going to be it for the movement phase for the Tyranids. We'll come back to you with the movement phase for the Gene Stealer Cult. So movement phase for the Gene Stealer Cult. This guy moved up over here. This guy stayed where he was on the objective. Uh, he readied himself. My comm specialist stayed where he was. Uh, this guy stayed where he was. My leader moved up here onto the objective. This guy moved up here and opened the door. Uh, this guy uh, advanced up over here, and he had to fall back because he was within an inch of an, of an enemy unit at the beginning of the movement phase. So his options are stay still or move or fall back. So he fell back uh, around the corner over here, uh, trying to get some obscuring from some whatever he can. And that is going to be, uh, and then, so that's it for that movement. But at the end of it here, he, is going to declare a charge into his um, Termagant over here. So 
my opponent is going to spend one CP on an arena specific ultra uh, close confines um, uh, special uh, specialty here. Uh, so it's going to be a stratagem that you can spend one command point. Uh, it's called point blank overwatch. Essentially what happens is uh, when you're playing this, he can um, he spends the command point when I declare the charge. And what it'll allow him to do is uh, do uh, fire overwatch at any point on my movement. Because right now he doesn't have line of sight onto me, so he can't fire overwatch. But what happens is, is if I get the charge off or I move far enough that I get into his line of sight over here, he can then choose to fire overwatch at that point when he becomes visible. So for one CP, he'll allow him to do that. So, pretty cool. So first we have to make sure that I can make it into him with this uh, movement, with the charge distance, because if I roll a, a two and I can't move into uh, the line of sight over there, it's just missed. He still can't shoot at me. So here we go. Let's find out what my charge distance will be. Uh, six inches is not going to get him in into combat, but I am probably going to move him. We'll come back to that. All right, so I did have moved. So I moved up over here with the charge move. Didn't get quite into combat. Uh, but my opponent is now going to fire overwatch basically when I come through the door is when he's going to choose to do it So looking for a six. Oh, And he gets it. So that's gonna be strength Strength four toughness three. So looking for a three to wound No, no wound. All right into the shooting phase My opponent's gonna start off with his warrior here who he's gonna spend uh, one CP his last CP for the round because he lost his leader So he only got went back one uh, for this turn. He's gonna spend it on uh, more bullets He's gonna fire three shots into my neophyte uh, gunner and he's gonna put one shot into my comm specialist over here so um, he's uh, within half range, so he doesn't have a minus penalty to that, but he is obscured, so it's going to be looking for a uh, three shots, looking for five or fives. So the three is hit. This is the first guy. the first guy? No, no hits into him there. So then onto the back guy. No, no hits. So now my heavy, uh, my uh, mining laser here uh, is going to fire into his heavy specialist. Uh, he's within half range. Uh, so I don't have a minus to that, but he is obscured, so it's going to be uh, looking for a, that would normally be a five to hit, but because my comm specialist is going to give him plus one, it means that he's going to be hitting on a four. That is a hit. Strength nine, so wounding on a two. That is a wound with a fill face. AP minus, like, a whole bunch. It's AP minus, uh, AP minus three. Uh, AP minus three. So is he three? He has, he has a four up armor. He doesn't have three up. He has a four up armor. So that's going to go straight through his armor there. So it's going to be doing D three damage. Two damage. So he's uh, down to uh, one wound left. All right. So that's the end of the turn because uh, we have no one else that can shoot because we've either fallen back, opened doors, or just don't have any range. Uh, so now, uh, so that is actually the end of the turn. So base scoring here. Uh, I score one point. I hold two, and I hold three, which actually gives me a full three points for the round. Uh, my opponent holds one, two objectives, so he scores uh, two points for the round, uh, bringing us to uh, five to five right now with that. But I have some secondary objectives that I scored. So um, I have scout the field. Uh, at the end of the battle round, score one victory point if there are models from your kill team other than shaking models within one inch of at least three different battlefield edges. Models wholly within your deployment zone don't count, but that's not what I have. I've got him over here with this edge and this edge over here, and then him over here. So that's three of the table edges that I am within an inch of, scoring me one point for that. I also score one point for recon sweep. Uh, at the end of the battle round, score one victory point if uh, one or, or, oh no, 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 that's not the one that I scored, sorry. Now, I, I just tipped my hand a little bit. What I actually what got was engage on all fronts, which is uh, divided into four equal rectangles. Um, at the end of the battle round, score one victory point if there are at least one model from your kill team, other than shaking models wholly within each of these rectangles. So I've got him up in this corner, I've got both of these guys in this corner, these guys in here, and these guys in here, scoring me two more points from my secondaries there, which is uh, pretty good. So that is going to be it for the uh, turn here. So now we will roll off to see who will have initiative going into turn three. Uh, getting a seven and a seven, so re-rolling. Uh, getting a six and a four, so the um, the Gene Stealer Cult will be going first. We'll come back to you after the movement phase. 
All right, moving phase for the Gene Stealer Cult. These guys shuffled around um, over over here, holding the objective. He readied himself. He just stayed where he was. Uh, this guy moved up along the edge here. My leader moved up over this way, just the other side over there. This guy moved up over here, and the rest of the three are going to charge. So we're going to start with him charging into uh, his warrior over here. So it's going to be D3 shots in Overwatch for him. So these are going to be uh, yeah D3 shots from his uh, Venom Cannon, right? Uh, D3 shots, right? Yeah. All right. So getting two shots. These are going to be hitting on sixes. No, no hits there. So his charge distance. Oh, is way in. This guy here is going to charge into his Termagon over here. Oh, that's a hit. Looking for a three to wound. That's a wound. No AP on this, right? So looking for a five up save. Oh, with the fill phase. Woo! And here comes his charge distance. He's way in. Not. And now Bazel especially is going to charge into his Termagon over here. So he's going to have one shot looking for a six. She's going to kill their children. No, no hit there. And he is way in. So moving face with the Tyranids, he's locked in combat, he's locked in combat, and he's locked in combat. He moved uh, slightly closer over here, but stayed within two inches of the objective over there. His Termagant is going to move over here onto this objective, but that is going to occur technically technically in the time frame menis uh, yeah. uh, after he is going to charge into my leader over here. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because you can do everything in different orders, but because I'm filming, I ask him to save the charges for last so I can get it on film, which we're going to do now. Uh, but when he declared this charge, it's going to be an 11 inch charge to get in. But when he declared the charge, I actually uh, spent one CP for uh, point blank overwatch to allow me to shoot at any point in his movement phase. So here he goes looking for an 11 inch charge. Does not get it, but he's swift and deadly, so he gets to re-roll. Oh, nine inches. Won't be enough in, so we'll see where he moves his dude, bro. All right, so he moved down over here, at which point I decided to unleash with my hand flamer. So it's going to be uh, D6, uh, D3 uh, auto, auto hits. So it's going to be two auto hits. Strength three, toughness four, so looking for fives to wound. Uh, getting one wound. So AP nothing on this. So just looking for his five up save. No, does not get it, but he's gonna spend his command point on that. Gonna spend his command point on it, looking for a five. And he makes it. All right, so that's it for the movement into the shooting phase. My leader is gonna uh, send another burst of flame into his, uh, into his gene stealer over here. So D3 auto hits. That's gonna be another two auto hits. Looking for fives to wound. Getting one wound. Regular five up save. Oh, and he's good. All right, so now his dude bro with the devourer is gonna fire into my leader. He's gonna have three shots hitting on fours because he's within half range and not obscured. So that's two hits. These are strength four, so looking for threes to wound. Getting one wound. AP nothing. So this is going to be looking for a five up save. No, goes through. See if he's knocked out. Don't do it! No, he's out! And now this guy here is going to uh, shoot into him with his auto pistol. It's going to be hitting on a five. That is a hit. Looking for a five to wound. No, no wound there. Um, I'm going to spend a command point to reroll that. And that is a wound. So five up save for him. No, no save there. So let's see if he's out of action. Uh, he does have, uh, it's going to be minus one to this because he's within an inch of terrain that is uh, between them there. So here we go. What's the roll? Nope, takes a flesh wound. All right, into the fight phase. I'm going to start with my guy with the heavy rock saw. He's going to attack into his termagon here. I've got three attacks hitting on threes because he's a uh, zealot there. So that's going to be all hits. Wounding on twos. That is three wounds at AP minus four. So he is way dead. Two damage apiece uh, on that six. He is out of action. All right, so now my dude bro here is going to attack into his uh, warrior there. So he's going to have two attacks hitting on threes. Oh, I'm going to spend a command point to reroll one of those. So that does happen there. So I got one hit. Uh, this is going to be uh, strength four, toughness four, looking for four to wound. No, no wound. Yeah, and then the cultist knife attack. Uh, that is a hit. 
That is a wound. AP nothing on this one. So that's going to be looking for a four up. No, goes through. So that's his last wound. Let's see if he's out of action. No, just takes the flesh wound. And then this guy attacking into him over here. So it's going to be two attacks, hitting on threes. That is going to be one hit, wounding on a three. That is a wound. AP minus one. Oh, no, six. That's AP minus like a whole lot. So he is going to be, uh, let's see if he is, uh, do the injury roll. On a one, he takes the flesh wound. All right, so now the Tyranids are going to attack back. He is going to be attacking here. He's going to be hitting on a five now because he's got that flesh wound. So one attack, looking for a five. No, no hit there. And then he is going to have uh, four attacks coming in here. These are also uh, these are going to be hitting on fours because of the flesh wound that he has. That just slows me down, right? Which one? This one? Yeah. Rerolling ones. Re ones because of the scything talons. Oh baby, all four hits. These are now going to be strength four, right? So threes to wound. Getting three wounds. AP nothing on these ones. So it's going to be three five up saves. Making zero, one of them. Making one of them. Uh, so, but he's still going to be uh, out of action. So it's uh, one damage a piece, right? So we got the one um, roll here. Let's see what happens. On a three, he's still there. All right, so that is the end of the turn into the morale phase. Uh, my opponent has two dead and he has one, two, three models with flesh wounds, uh, which means that he has to roll to see if he is breaking. He has a, a leadership of nine on these, both of these guys. So he's looking for less than a nine on this 2d6 roll and he is good to go on that. Um, now we have to roll to see if they're shaken because they have flesh wounds. So we'll roll him. So he, uh, he's got nine. There's two guys out of action. So I think he's good to go. Um, uh, shaken or out of action. Yep. So he can't fail on that. Uh, but he possibly can. What's his leadership over here? It's probably very low. We'll figure that one out. But he's also going to be a nine, so he'll be fine. Uh, so we might have to take a leadership for him. We'll come back to that. All right. So his leadership is five. So it's going to be D6 plus two. Uh, five. So he is going to be shaken. Um, so he can't do anything this next turn. Uh, so then I've got one guy over here with a flesh wound. Uh, I have three guys out of action. So uh, his leadership is a seven. So with a one, he is good to go. So we will come back to you uh, with the roll for initiative. All right, yep. so he's the only one there with the uh, shaken token there. So now we will roll off to see who has initiative going into the fourth and final round. Oh, no, no, I forgot. We have to shoot scoring. <laughs> An important part of this, uh, this whole game is scoring. So um, my opponent has one objective two objectives controlled. So he gets two more points from that, uh, putting him at, uh, oh, what is it at? Seven, now he puts him at seven. Um, uh, he does not score any of his secondaries. So now we go into uh, my turn. I control one objective, two objective, three objectives. So I score uh, three points for the primary. Uh, from that, I also scored another one of uh, uh, um, of engage on all fronts because I've got people um, in object in the zone here, in the zone here, in the zone here, and in the zone here, and then I have the uh, I get the uh, scout the field because I've got uh, on this table edge, and then he's along these two table edges over here, uh, and that is going to be scoring me those points, and then. I also have, finally, Recon Sweep, uh, where I score a victory point uh, if um, um, if uh, one or more models are wholly within the enemy deployment zone, which he is over there. So getting me another point for that. So it's getting three points from the secondaries, plus three points from the primaries, giving me six points, putting me at, I think, 13 points. Or no, five, we had five, six, seven. Yeah, at 13 points. The max you can get is nine uh, for the entire game. So I've maxed out my points uh, for, for, uh, for this one, which is pretty, pretty incredible. So uh, we will now um, roll off to see who has initiative going into the fourth and final round. And with an 11, I will be going first. So we will come back to you after movement phase for the Gene Stealer Cult. All right, movement phase for the Gene Stealer Cult here on turn four. My con specialist moved over here. He uh, readied himself, Gunner there. These two guys just stayed back over here. He fell back over to that direction over there. Um, he stayed in combat here. He stood still. And then we're going to have some charges. So we're going to start with him charging into his... Uh, into his gene stealer over here, his combat specialist. It's a bold call, Cotton. See if it works out. 
Uh, he is going to be in. And now my Zealot Specialist is going to charge into his guy over here. He cannot see me, so no Overwatch. Unless you can spend, he's going to spend his command point on uh, on the point blank Overwatch. So let's see his uh, charge distance first. Uh, eight inches, I think, will get him in. So we'll come back to that. All right, so he's going to fight the Overwatch basically as I come through the door over there. So here we go. He's going to have D3 shots. Getting two shots, hitting on sixes. Getting no hits there, so he is into combat over there. All right, so moving phase for the Gene Stealer cult. Uh, Gene Stealer. Uh, Gene Stealer. Tyranids. <laughs> uh, he is locked in combat over here. He stood still where he was. He's locked in combat, or stayed in combat there. He uh, stayed in, uh, is locked in combat over here. He moved through the door over there and then shut it behind him, uh, sealing himself inside there from uh, the other scary uh, monster bros that are all around here. And that is going to be it for the movement phase. So we will come back to you with the shooting phase. JK, no, uh, no, no shooting involved at all over here. So we're going to go into uh, the fight phase over here. My uh, zealot specialist is going to attack into his warrior here with three attacks, hitting on threes. Getting one hit. This is going to be wounding on a two. I'm going to spend a command point to reroll that. Back into a one. Oh, painful. And now my guy here is going to attack into him over here with the charge. So he's got two attacks. These are going to be hitting on threes. That is two hits. Wounding on fours. Getting one wound at AP minus one. Five up in vol save. No, it goes through. So this is going to be plus one to this roll because of his injury. Uh, mortal, the flesh wound there. No, another flesh wound. I can do it. And then I'm going to activate this guy first. So it's going to be two attacks here, hitting on threes. That's going to be uh, one hit, wounding on a uh, wounding on a three. That is a wound. AP minus one. So wow. does he get uh, save? Wow. No, no save on AP minus one. All right. So plus one for the uh, plus one for the uh, the flesh wound he already has. And he takes another flesh wound. All right. So now his combat specialist here is going to attack into my guy over here. He's got two flesh wounds, so he's got four attacks because of combat specialist. Uh, but these are going to be hitting on fives now because of the flesh wounds. Uh, still gets that one hit. That's one, all he needs. This is going to be strength four, looking for a three to wound. That is a wound. AP minus one, so it's looking for a six up save. Show me that fell first. No, close. If it wasn't AP one, I would have had it. Uh, so an injury test now here. On a five, he's out of action. And now this guy is going to attack into me over here. He's going to have four attacks. He's going to be hitting on uh, fours because he's got that one flesh wound. Rerolling ones. Reroll those ones. All right, so getting two hits. These are going to be wounding on threes. Getting one wound. Looking for a five up serve. No, I don't make it. Injury, uh, let's see if he's at injury roll here. Three takes a flesh wound. All right, so that is the end of the turn there. We're going to skip the morale phase because turn four is the end of the turn and it's not going to affect um, uh, what is going on for these. Oh, no, no. I guess it could possibly affect. Uh, so I've got... I've got one, two, um, two guys with flesh wounds, and I've got uh, four of them out. So that six uh, puts me at uh, no. That's exactly half of my of my army. So I don't have to roll uh, for breaking, but I do have a morale test to take over here. So I've got four guys out to see if I if he is shook. On a five. That's going to be nine. He would be shaken, but I'm going to spend a command point to... Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the... Uh, the uh, no, I, I didn't do it, so I have to do it again. I'm going to spend a command point to reroll that into a one. So he is not shaken. And um, that is the only one that would have mattered uh, for points-wise because, uh, because of that, I have these two guys on the edges and him over there. That gives me my third point that I can score for... Um, for uh, engage on all fronts. Oh, no, no, for uh, scout the field. I also got uh, someone in each of the table quarters by moving him over here. Um, these guys are over here and those guys are over there, giving me uh, my third point for uh, engage on all fronts. And because these guys are inside of the, uh, the deployment zone, I get a second point for recon sweep. Um, primary, my opponent scored one, two, and holds a third, which is more than the two that I hold. So he gets three points from that, and I get two points from the primary. 
and uh, that is going to be it for the points. So at the end of the game, my opponent has uh, a total of 10 points, uh, 10 points, and I scored um, the maximum nine from the primary, because like, you can only score nine from the primary on this mission. Uh, so I had eight going into this mission, so I got one more from that. So I scored nine points from the primary, and then I scored uh, an additional uh, six, seven, eight points from tertiary, giving me a total of 17 points. So a uh, fantastic victory there for the Gene Stealer Colt. I had a blast. <laughs> Arena is a ton of fun. It's very different, very tactical. It's a, it's like a whole nother beast, really, to uh, to 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 kill team. Um, but it's it's fast. It's four rounds. You just you, you just go in there. Everything's kind of set up the way it is specifically, so you can just like bang out games and just have a ton of fun. It's very uh, very technical, very uh, strategic, which makes it a lot of fun. And I know it says it's like the competitive game, and I know that the, the, they're competitive gaming expansion. Um, and I know a lot of people. People don't like the word competitive when they talk about Warhammer or anything related to that, but this is a completely different beast altogether. It's uh, it's it's competitive in the fact that it's very um, very specified how things are laid out, so you can have the same layout in a in a, in a dozen different um, a dozen different games going on at the same time. So everyone's playing the same mission, everyone's on the same level playing field, which is what they mean by competitive is that you can have tournaments of this very easily without having to worry, like without people complaining is like, well, if I was on the other table, I would have done so much better because of the way the terrain is exactly the same every single one. Um, it does simplify it, I guess, a little bit in the fact that there's no 3D uh, element to this game, uh, to, the, to this version of Kill Team. But, I mean, I did not think, I did not feel like it had been simplified to the point that it was boring at all. It just felt fun. It felt engaging and it felt technical. And the fact that, you know, you have to, the whole point is playing to the objective. So you have to try to get your points and you have to choose your points. So my opponent, for instance, chose when he was going, uh, chose Recon Sweep and he also chose uh, Death from Afar, thinking all his shooty guys were just going to start wailing into my guys and, and plicking them off as they came up here. But because I got into his face so fast, it kept him from being able to shoot me, and it also kept him from being able to get into my deployment zone to get those secondary objectives. So, I didn't know what those were, but it happened to counter his 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 uh, his strategy. And the strategy that it had wasn't flawed. It just got countered by the fact that I was able to do what I did um, with my army, which is which is a lot of fun. And mine, I knew what I needed to do, and I just spread out like a like a like a spilled glass of milk on the counter. I just went to every single corner of the board and uh, managed to, to pop off all of those. And I knew that I mean in the end I guess I only killed two models. So <laughs> I knew that going head to head with, with his guys was gonna be more of more of an issue for me. I had some hard punches, but I mean my combat specialist got plinked off there on turn uh, you know, turn one. Uh, turn one in Overwatch, so he didn't even get into combat there, uh, which meant that I was going to be at a disadvantage if I really tried to, to go head to head. And I knew that killing two models per turn was not going to happen. So what I was, I, what I decided was, I had enough bodies, I had enough people that I could spread out and hold uh, those other objectives, and that's why I chose what I did. And it was a lot of fun. So I had a ton of fun with this game, and you were going to see more of these uh, interspersed with the kill team stuff. And I think it's going to be really, really good. Another thing I wanted to shout out was these awesome markers so this is the uh the kill team kit from hammerhead games uh there's a link in the, i'll put a link in the description below and what these guys are is they have uh the set comes with these cool little uh ring things with the names of all of the specialists uh and it comes with a set that comes with all the specialists in 24 mil in 32 mil and in 40 mil, which is all the base sizes that you can have for uh, your different, uh, for the different models in Kill Team. And it just keeps the specialist there. So if you have like a whole bunch of just pure, uh, pure strain gene stealers, for instance, and you can't remember which one's your, your zealot specialist, which one's your combat specialist, you can put these rings on them and it follows around with them very easily and keeps it all set. They also have a whole bunch of these different markers which are always fun to have. And ones that I thought were really cool is that, because I got yelled at a lot for using the shaken markers as, as like flesh wounds. It comes with flesh wound markers here, and it also comes with shaken markers um, as well, so that they're easy to define and easy to keep. And it just comes with a whole kit with a whole bunch of them in there. And uh, I can't, I mean, it's really nice. And those objectives also come with it too. So awesome, awesome kit, awesome, awesome stuff there. So highly recommend checking it out. So uh, check them out at Hammerhead Games. Um, 
and uh and you know tell them that the glacial geek said hi so <laughs> anyway i hope you guys have all enjoyed this i certainly have i have been phil the glacial geek as always my opponent's been neil and until next time have fun <laughs>